Honestly, I could just sit here for a solid minute and yawn directly into my microphone, and I feel that that alone would thoroughly summarize exactly how I feel about this studio album. But, since we're already here, since this is apparently a highly anticipated album, and since, quite frankly, it is genuinely fun to enrage the boomer metalheads, why not? Let's get into the nitty-gritty of this fascinating new album from Accept. <laughs> I've never actively disliked Except, but I've never been particularly interested in them either. Not because they lack talent per se, but simply because they lack innovation, originality, flavor. I've always kind of seen them as a very generic, predictable, cookie-cutter heavy metal band. Rehashing and recycling the same riffs, the same guitar solos, the same hooks, the same melodies, the same fucking lyrics for that matter, over and over and over again, 16 times over again as a matter of fact, as of this new studio album, Too Mean to Die. Now call me crazy, but if somebody were to serve me the exact same meal every fucking night of the week for 16 fucking days in a row and they just microwaved it over and over and over again, I'd probably lose a little bit. I'd, I'd probably tell them to fuck off and bring me something different, but y'all are clearly, y'all y'all clearly don't care. Y'all clearly love your, your bland, microwaved meat and potatoes, and good for you, I guess, you know, fucking... Bravo, you're boring. Congrats. But, uh, yeah, not me. I, I like flavor, I like fun, I like excitement. And, uh, none of those things are found anywhere on Too Mean to Die. There is not a single moment on this record that I would not expect to hear from, like, a Judas Priest cover band that finally decided to write their own original material. The album is so thoroughly, consistently, almost dependably predictable. A lot of the riffs sound pretty much the same. There are no risks of any kind taken on this record whatsoever. A lot of the hooks and melodies sound the same to the point where they often bleed together entirely. Uh, a lot of the guitar solos are, to their credit, kind of fun, but they all last for pretty much the same duration and they all use more or less the same techniques and tricks all throughout, so as a result, they all kind of bleed together and sound the same. And as a result, the few moments that end up standing out on this record tend to stand out for the wrong fucking reason entirely. Take, for instance, the tracks Sucks To Be You and Zombie Apocalypse, which sound like the kind of edgy and corny tripe that I would expect a band of teenagers to be writing after discovering heavy metal for the first time. Or the track The Undertaker, which tries to convince you that it's a lot more epic and ambitious than it actually is by having a super atmospheric guitar introduction. <gasps> so spooky. <gasps> so melodic. <gasps> so immersive and different. Why is every single metal band on the fucking planet making stupid fucking intros like this? They're stupid. They've been stupid since the 80s. You're not fooling anyone. Cut it out, just jump into the fucking song. Or the track No One's Master, which quite frankly sounds like if Super Collider era Megadeth tried to write a Countdown to Extinction era Megadeth song. It's basically Mark Tornillo pandering to his aging boomer fan base going, The media sucks. They're responsible for everything bad in the world. I'm a man, not a slave. And look, generally speaking, I'm not the type of guy who even pays attention to lyrics in his old school heavy metal, but it's kind of hard not to pay attention to just how utterly fucking stupid and out of touch some of these lyrics are. Take for instance the track Overnight Sensation, which in theory I guess is supposed to sound like a legitimate jab at social media and modern pop culture, but in execution once again sounds like Mark Tornillo pandering to his 
aging boomer fan base. With genuinely stupid, almost cringeworthy lines like, I want to be famous for nothing, just like a Kardashian, and you're gonna get my opinion because I'm a boss and it's my stage. And is it just me or does anyone else find it a little bit confusing that a track entitled How Do We Sleep, in which Except ponders how the world has gone to such hell, is immediately followed by Not My Problem, in which Except says, hey, the world has fallen to hell, but too bad, that's your problem, not mine. I have to assume it's at least a little bit your problem if it's keeping you awake at night, you fucking dumbass. Now, believe it or not, I'm not so heartless that I can't acknowledge when Too Mean to Die has some objectively fun shit to offer. For instance, the title track is a pretty banging little heavy metal number. A great hook, a great riff, a great sizzling guitar solo, all wrapped in a crispy, crunchy, metallic coating thanks to the fantastic production value. Credit where it's due, the sound mix is really good on this thing. The track Samson and Delilah is another highlight on the record, ending the album on a genuinely powerful note. And even the aforementioned Not My Problem, as stupid as it is, is, is kind of fun stupid, musically speaking. It has this really raucous and confident energy to it. But here's the thing. Two legitimately good songs plus one arguably ironically good song is still only three good songs out of 11. And if you got a three out of 11 on a test as a kid, that's a failing grade. I'm going to give this thing a two out of five, but for the record, I want to go lower. I want to give this a 1.5 out of 5, because in my opinion, this is a really bad album. But I'll give credit where it's due. The production is really good. The performances are really good. And uh, there is genuine enthusiasm and energy flowing throughout this album's veins, something I can't always say for a number of new records from a number of other aging 80s metal bands. Cough, cough, Anvil. Cough, cough, Venom. Cough, cough, Overkill. If you are looking for an incredibly quick and simple burst of old-school heavy metal, well, frankly, I would recommend you go listen to Haunt, or Spirit Adrift, or Striker, or Skullfist, but let's say you've already listened to those bands, and they've done nothing for you. You can't really go wrong with this, I suppose, in theory. As far as I'm concerned, it's a mostly cheesy and boring record that I'll probably forget about the moment this review goes online. There's just nothing reeling me back in. Even the good songs don't give me anything that I haven't already heard by Accept or done objectively better by another band. Plain and fucking simple. Two out of five. A pretty fucking poor record. Just... Just go listen to the other Accept albums. They're way better. Let's all be honest with ourselves here. They're way fucking better. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown. E fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.